Good evening and welcome to this February 4th Planning Commission meeting. Um, we'd like to start tonight off by recognizing a project that the Planning Commission feels deserves such recognition and Commissioner Dunlap will be doing those honors. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tonight's uh, designee is Montgomery Furniture. We have a slide up on uh, the screen there. Montgomery Furniture Store located on 41st Street underwent a major addition and remodel. After exploring several options, the final design includes raising an entire building and vacating a street to accommodate the owner's programming needs. The store was designed to have three storefront identities, traditional, modern, and mattress. The site presented several challenges. They were required to combine parcels and due to the increased size of the building, they had to rezone to the C3 zoning district. The final building size is 52,827 square feet. And due to the massing of the building, the architect broke down the, the scale of the facade with varying heights, recesses, and materials. The single building now reads as a series of buildings. The owners have incorporated an attractive and colorful sculpture near the center entrance. At night, the massive storefronts are lit up to display merchandise to vehicles passing by on 41st Street. Please help us by recognizing Montgomery Furniture. Thanks, Commissioner Dunlap. At this time, the Planning Commission will approve the consent agenda as well as the regular agenda. And Denise, if you would read the consent agenda items. Yes, Madam Chair. Item one is approval of the January 7th, 2015 minutes of the regular meeting. Item two is January plats. Item three is 2094-2014 rezone from the C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar district to the CN conservation district were allowed forms located at the southwest corner of North Career Avenue and North Research Drive. Item four, 2144-2015 rezone from the C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar district to the downtown plan unit development for allowed forms located at 901 North Main Avenue. Item five, 2145 to 2015 rezone from the C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar district to the downtown plan unit development for allowed forms located at 910 North Main Avenue. Item six, 2163 to 2015 rezone from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District for allowed forms located at 1224 and 1226 East Rice Street. Item seven. 2164 to 2015 rezone from the AG Agricultural District to the RA3 Apartment Residential High Density S2 Institutional Campus Plan Unit Development, C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar and CN Conservation District for allowed forms located east of South Cliff Avenue and north and south of East 77th Street. Item eight, 2173-2015 rezone from the CN Conservation District to the O Office District for allowed forms located at 6009 South Minnesota Avenue. Item nine, 2176 to 2015 rezone from the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District to the O Office District for allowed forms located at 3405 South Kathy Avenue. Item 10, 2180 to 2015 rezone from the C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar district to the O office district for allowed forms located south of East 26th Street 
and west of South Schaefer Avenue. Thanks, Denise. Um, staff, I believe there are, is there a change on the consent agenda? To defer item number eight, correct? Are there any objections from the audience on any of the items on the consent agenda? Any questions or objections on the consent agenda from the commissioners? Nope, seeing none, all right, we need a motion to defer item number eight from the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. All right, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Madam Chair, I'd like to amend the consent agenda to defer item eight to next month's meeting. All right, we have a motion to amend the consent agenda with deferring item number eight. All in, and we have a second? Second. Okay, and all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now I need a motion to approve the consent agenda yeah, with the deferral, so we're good. But okay, we to just, just to vote, just to do what? Just to vote to approve the consent agenda as amended. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. We need a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Second. Right, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The consent agenda items have been approved. If you are here for any of those items, you're free to leave. Now we'll make a motion to approve the regular agenda. Move to approve the regular agenda. We'll second that. All right, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 And opposed, same sign. All right, motion passes. Item 11 is 2162-2015 conditional use permit in the RE3 form to allow a car wash within 250 feet of DD forms located at 1620 South Sycamore Avenue. Uh, Jason Bieber with Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application by Steve Booty. Uh, he would like to demolish the existing self-service car wash on the site and the uh, garages on the east and construct a full service car wash. It is located at 1620 South Sycamore Avenue, which is uh, just north of the Walgreens at the intersection of 26 and Sycamore. Uh, the proposed building and, and parking appear to meet the required 10 foot setbacks as required within the RE3 form. Uh, the site plan does indicate the required nine parking spaces for this particular use. A level B buffer yard will be required along the east property line, which uh, requires a 15 foot setback and two foot berm. Uh, however, a parking lot may encroach into that setback by five feet, and then it will require a four foot fence um, instead of the two foot berm. Uh, the proposed car wash is located on a site which currently contains uh, existing self-service car wash. The parcel is surrounded by commercial on the north, south, and west sides. And the required level B buffer yard along the east property line should provide the necessary buffering to those DD5 forms to the east. Uh, because the application has provided clarity and to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed, staff does recommend approval of this conditional use permit, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Jason. Any questions for staff? Jason, did I hear you say there is an existing car wash uh, self-serve there at the present time? Yep, there's an existing self-serve car wash, correct. Thank you. All right, thank you. And would the applicant please come forward, state your name and address. Steve Booty, 1305 East Benson Road, Sioux Falls. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, the, uh, the uh, two of the partners of the ownership group are here. If you have any questions, they have an existing location in the city, and I think they'll do a better job of answering any questions of how their operation works. It, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a, a replacement car wash, so but we can call them up if you have questions. Right. Any questions from the commissioners? Right. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and comment on this item? All right. Seeing none, I'd like a motion to approve. I'll move to approve uh, item 11. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
All right, seeing none, all in signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, motion passes. Item 12, 2167-2015, conditional use permit in the UT2 form to allow a telecommunications tower located at 3510 South Ralph Rogers Road. Uh, Jason Bieber again with Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application by Jimmy Cooper with Cooper Communications. Uh, it is located 3510 South Ralph Rogers Road and the proposed tower site will be located just east of the existing MB building and just north of the parking lot there. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct 190 foot telecommunication towers uh, for multiple carriers. Uh, this pr proposed tower will replace the existing tower uh, that is located on the south side of West 69th Street and west south and west of excuse me South Hemmingstone Trail, um, located on Avera's property. The proposed telecommunication tower will replace that existing tower, as I uh, stated before, and will be located roughly 1,500 feet uh, farther south of 69th Street than the existing tower. Uh, further, or, uh, because of the close proximity to the residential uses on the east um, and an assisted living center to the north, the applicant should pay special attention to the design character of the proposed above ground buildings as well as screening of the site. Staff feels the proposed building should have a similar look and color to that existing MB building. Further, the compound should be surrounded by a six foot high vinyl screen fence. And finally, a total of three coniferous trees should be provided and placed on the east side of the compound. Uh, the above standard should provide the necessary screening from adjacent residential and institutional uses. And because of the application has provided clarity to indicate the extent nature of the uh, proposed, uh, the work proposed, excuse me, staff does recommend approval to the conditional use permit with the following conditions. Uh, one, to construct an equipment buildings with similar look and color as the existing MB building. Two, to provide a six foot high vinyl screen fence around the tower and equipment and then a little bit of a modification to the staff report uh, condition number three. Um, instead of what's listed, the condition to provide three coniferous trees on the east side of the proposed lease area. And the reason for that is they just won't work on the south and the north side. And there's three existing trees on the site right now that will be moved there and they're 10 to 12 foot high existing coniferous trees. And staff would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for staff? So as you say, something to complement the color of this building, remind me what color it is? That I'm not exa exactly sure. I think it's a probably, yeah, I think it's a kind greenish of a, tan. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I was remembering, kind of a mint yep. green. So, so you're recommending to paint that entire? Something that will not try and make it blend in as much as possible with the existing building. That's something we can work on, just. All right, thank you, Jason. Is the applicant here? Please come forward, state your name and address. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cooper, uh, 26158 and 455th <coughs> Avenue in Humboldt. And uh, we are the ones that would uh, replace the tower that's out there, that 465 footer with this 190 footer. And I'm willing to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Any questions? Right, seeing none, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and comment on this item? You could please state your name and address. Yes, my name's Joel Foggerhow. I live at 3300 West Miles Place, uh, about a block east of uh, this new structure. I do have a few concerns. When I looked up Cooper Communications with the FCC today, I did not find any licenses by the FCC. The only license for a company named Cooper Communications was in Redding, California, and that was uh, revoked on uh, d December 31st, 2014. It was for a television relay tower. I was trying to see if I could find what kind of effective radiated power, what frequencies this transmission tower is on, and see if there's any health risks uh, from radiation. And also, I'm curious about ingress. Do we need to re 
wire our cable inside of our condominium? Uh, are they going to provide funds for for uh, providing shielded cab cabling or filters should it block our ability to receive uh, regular radio transmissions. That's the concern that we as residents in the area have. Okay, there were a lot of questions there. So thank you, but I think, and I can't answer any of them. So I think what I'd like to do is have the applicant come forward and I'm, um, hopefully you can answer some of those questions. We may have to have you ask a few of those again. I'm not sure I was able to keep track of all of them, but. Okay, Jim Cooper again. And uh, yeah, this is just a regular uh, cellular tower and it's the same as uh, the antennas that are across the street. So the ones on the 465 foot tower, AT&T and uh, Sprint will be moving to this other location. Um, there really isn't any, I'm you know, Ben Cooper Communication, I've been around for quite a while. We have towers. We had towers in Pier, Watertown, uh, Humboldt, Coleman. We still have a few around. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we've been registered for a lot of years. A tower on less than a, on 200 feet uh, really doesn't have to be registered. You can register it if you want, and we will register this tower, but you don't have to, and it doesn't have to have lights either, unless the city would ask for it or the T airport or someone else like that. As far as any radiation or that, I there's not a concern of that that I've ever known for, if it was a microwave tower or a TV tower. The TV tower across the street that KTTW has, that emits uh, um, probably a radiation type uh, because when you get up on a tower like that, uh, if you're wearing a chain or anything like that, it turns hot, but there's not gonna be any antennas like that on this tower. And you can work within 100 feet of that after 100 feet then you don't need any protective gear. You don't have to worry about that either. So I don't know of any concerns with frequencies. Uh, the same frequencies that are in the area now will be the same frequencies that are being used. And any new customers that come have to provide shielding or spacing for their new antennas so that they don't interfere with any other carriers uh, as far as that getting to ground level or interfering with any uh, television or uh, cable uh, viewing, it, that's never been an issue that I know of. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would have any questions? All right, seeing none, I need a motion to approve. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve item 12 with the three conditions as read. All right, we have a motion. I need a second. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying yes. Discussion? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Let's have discussion prior to voting. Excuse me. Madam Chair, yes. I mean, it, it's, to me, it sounds pretty straightforward. They're just moving it basically the same tower, 1,500 feet, so there shouldn't be any concerns from neighbors because that tower is already there. And I also like the idea of uh, the recommendations that staff made. Um, I think the comment about trying to have a similar look and color to the existing building might be in question because that mint green is going to look, I would think, fairly strange as it gets farther above that building. And so I would ask uh, staff consider maybe some other color combinations. Gray and light blue actually blends pretty well to make it disappear in a lot of cases, but I would ask that uh, staff consider those options I as they're looking at Comment it. on that. I think they're talking about the building, not the tower. So the building needs to be the same tones as MB, but the tower should be whatever tower color. Oh, okay. And staff can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm right. Oh, that awesome. was not entirely that. clear in the, uh, in the notes. That's good. And the amended third comment to just use the existing trees as opposed to mm -hmm. forcing this into around the parking lot is good. Good amendment. Yep. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Now all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 13, 2183-2015, preliminary subdivision plan for USF South Campus. Addition located east of South Cliff Avenue and north and south of East 77th Street. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to defer 
item 13 to the next meeting. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second to defer item number 13 to the next meeting. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All the same sign, motion passes. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second. All right, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All right, we are adjourned.